Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's a uh, chilly day today down here in Zone 9A on the Texas coast. Thought I'd just give you a little bit of a garden update and my thoughts on the last couple of years. Well, still getting some jalapenos. They're rather small. My muscadines have not dropped their leaves yet, which is somewhat unusual for this time of year. Things are kind of strange in the garden. Let's walk over here and take a look. Yeah, the brassicas, they're, they're doing all right. I've been ma managing to stay on top of the weeding with my stirrup hoe in these gardens. Broccoli, looking okay over here. Those spindly ones. Yeah, they'll take off. Yeah, things are kind of strange. I've got a lot of rain in the past several days, and you can see my dog. Hmm, she's been digging in the garden right there. At least she didn't destroy anything. Yeah, these are pak choy. They need to be thinned. I'll let them come up a little more so I can get down there and see them and differentiate between the stalks. Turnips coming up just fine. They'll need to be thinned as well. Once again, we'll just let them grow a little lar larger so we can differentiate. Over here, my cauliflower is looking pretty healthy. Got my backups right there in case I need them. I grew cauliflower a couple of years ago very successfully. And uh, so we're going to grow six, six more here. Yeah, these carrots right here, though, I think they're done for. I haven't seen any coming up. Let's see. We got any carrots coming up? I don't see any. I should start to expect, I put these in on the 9th. Today's the 22nd. If they were going to come up, they probably should have. Sometimes carrots are hard to see when they start coming up. They're little feathery, wispy things. But you can see this part of my garden is lower and the water just pooled here over the last many days. Constant rain and the water just pooled here. And I'm not sure that those seeds are going to come up. They may have rotted or drowned in there. May have just been too much water. Um, water, when it rains, just sits on top of the soil until it stops raining. Then it drains pretty well. Now the leeks over there, they're doing all right. All of them survived the transplanting process. You know, things have been very strange in my garden for the past two years. In February... On February the 8th of 2021, that's almost two years ago, um, we had that epic Texas freeze, that, that storm that came, and we stayed below freezing from the 8th all the way to the 20th. The 20th of February is just 10 days before our average last frost date here, and that storm was the most expensive disaster in Texas history. Many of you already know about that. Um, it was 14 degrees here Fahrenheit, which for our area is pretty much unheard of. Uh, there's been very few freezes like that. And this garden uh, was hit hard. My citrus tree over there, my lemon tree, Lucy the lemon tree, though I covered her and had uh, heat sources under the blankets, um, power was out for days and days. And Lucy froze to the ground, basically. Um, I saved Lucy from uh, complete disaster by wrapping the trunk real, real heavily once the uh, power went out and we were able to cut Lucy back down to uh, what I thought was above the graft unit. Now I'm not so sure. I, we, we did get some good Meyer lemon fruit. Let's wait for the astronauts to fly over. Always so loud. Alright, well a couple of F-16s took longer than I thought to uh, get out of the area but they're, they're gone enough I think we can hear again. <laughs> So, as I was saying, Lucy, the lemon tree, I, I got some Meyer lemon stock above the graft that grew. I've got Meyer lemons now, but I've also got all these gnarly little, all this growth that has these small little citrus lime looking things on them. And I'm not sure they're Meyer lemons, so we're going to let those grow out to see if maybe I've got rootstock growing up there as well. If we take a look at Lucy, the lemon tree, you can see the Meyer lemons are certainly present. And I'm going to have to track some of these branches back to their source 
and see if on these same branches we get those weird green fruits like this. That's a different branch and I wonder if that's rootstock. Like this here. I wonder if that's rootstock. I'll track that back. If we have Meyer lemons and these green things on the same branches, then we know those are just a, a late fruiting, which would make sense considering how all my trees are confused. So here we have these green fruits. Most of the Meyer lemons seem to be down near the bottom. Okay, so I've got a lemon on this branch. Let's see if we've got any. I don't see any of those weird green things. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say these are probably from the rootstock and are no good for eating. However, with all that vigorous rootstock, I can graft onto Lucy. I can graft good stuff onto Lucy. We can have a Franken citrus tree. Yeah, I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a Meyer lemon. We'll see. But that freeze really did a number on all the trees and plants in my garden. Uh, I've also noticed a change in the kinds of weeds that now grow here. Um, we've got some strange new weeds that come up everywhere. I'll show it to you in a moment. Uh, we've got some strange new weeds that come up everywhere that we didn't have before. we got to wait for these guys to stop flying. So anyway, the weeds are different, and I'm not sure if I can attribute that to the freeze. It's just been this past two years. Uh, the weeds are different. I've got much more nut sedge than I had before as well. Um, some of the weeds that we had before, like purslane, uh, which you can eat it, but I don't see it so much anymore. I guess a lot of that was killed off. Um, yeah, so the weeds are different. Also, the insects and bugs have been different. I've had more pestilence in... 2021 and 2022 more bug invasions more more of everything bad in the garden um, after that freeze that I didn't have in the many many years before so I wonder is that related I don't know my poor fruit trees my fig trees especially I, I saved all my potted citrus I took it into the house and into the garage and so they, they're doing fine uh, but my fig trees, I didn't have room for them. And citrus, for me, has precedent over figs. Citrus is more important. So the fig trees stayed outside. Um, I thought I had lost all my fig trees, but in reality, it just it froze them back a bit and stunted their growth. They didn't grow in 2021 uh, more than an inch or two on each of their, uh, on the limbs. Um, I did lose one or two, but yeah, they got real confused. And all that year, they didn't grow much. And I wasn't able to shape them. Well, 2022 rolls around and, well, they started to grow a bit more, but they didn't fruit. And so I'm wondering if that has something to do with the freeze as well. Boy, these guys are flying all over the place. So here's that weed. And it has all these little flower heads on it with seeds. And they come up everywhere. They've got milky sap. They grow in the yard. They grow in the garden. They grow in my pots. And they come up and they just populate these potted plants like crazy. I'm having to always come out and pull them pull them out of there. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Somebody once identified this in the comment section in a previous video, but I forgot. But all I know is I don't like it, and it grows everywhere now. I didn't have this weed before. Um, and you can see the state of these trees, these fig trees. They're dormant right now. This is a living tree. But they haven't grown much more than this. This was my 2020 pruning right here this this right here so only these have grown since the freeze and i'm not sure if these trees are just confused i'm going to give them another year and see if they put on heavy growth this coming spring uh, if we don't have a, a another freeze this year like we did before but you can see some of them still have a few leaves on there but they're dropping their leaves i think they might be coming back to uh, some sense of normalcy does that happen when there's an extreme weather condition to your plants, to your trees? I don't know. It just seems to me that something happened during that epic freeze that really knocked my garden kind of out of kilter, out of whack. 
like I said, my muscadines, they haven't dropped their leaves yet. Uh, they fruited this year. I did corrective pruning last, uh, last, last dormant season uh, at the beginning of this year. I did some heavy pruning and well, some of my plants responded well, some of them I'd expected them not to be real heavy with fruit this year because I had to take a lot of material off. But they did give me good fruit, but they're just acting weird. I also had uh, the skeletonizer moth, which came and attacks. It's a grapevine skeletonizer moth. Never seen those before the freeze. And now I see them every year and have to treat for them. Or every year. There's been two years, two seasons. So, yeah, the muscadine survived the freeze, but new pests. It's bizarre. Look how thick that vine is. That's an inch and a half diameter. This is a six-year-old I think six-year-old grapevine this is a weed that I've had and didn't die back which I wish it would have and that's a stinky vine right there but yeah these these muscadines this one responded real well now we've got a thick mess to clean up but uh, should be dropping its leaves now it's just about time I think to harvest sweet potatoes but as I probe around in here I can't find any these grew like crazy they've grown all this mass of leaves now you can eat these leaves they're actually very delicious very nutritious for you but i like sweet potatoes and i'm not seeing any i'm sure if we dig down here enough we'll find some but yeah these guys are supposed to be ready by now sometimes sweet potatoes well if they've got some warm weather they'll just put a lot of foliage on and work on building foliage. So what I should have done is, and I've said this in a previous video, is weed whacked some of this vine, all this vine, and weed whacked it away so the plant would focus on not growing vines, but roots, because that's what we want to eat. But I didn't do that, and so I've got a lot of foliage. That's the way it goes sometimes. What are we gonna do if we don't get anything out of here? We'll just press on, plant something else here. Man, it's wet back here. So I've, I've had a bit of a discouraging year. I've had a bit of a discouraging two years um, with this garden. Although we've had success, we've had to adapt and adjust. And that's what we do as gardeners. If you have challenges that come along, whether they be environmental challenges, whether they be uh, life changes, things that happen that take you away from the garden, um, I just want to encourage you to press on, just adapt and change. I didn't get my plants in until a month late uh, from what my target. My target was the 1st of October. I didn't get stuff in here until November. And, well, you know what? That's okay. Um, just press on. Just garden. When I see weeds that I've never seen before come up, well, we just deal with them. And when I see a tree get knocked back by a freeze and grow up, and apparently both the scion wood for the Meyer lemon and the rootstock have grown. Um, well, I could be upset and chop that tree down or I could just deal with it and prune off a lot of that uh, no good fruit and take some of that wood and graft good citrus to it. I have some citrus trees in pots, but that tree, man, that tree grows crazy because I think it's tapped into the sewer line and it's eating out of the sewer. That makes for a really healthy tree. If I've got a healthy rootstock down there, and I've got wood that's coming up that isn't really going to bear me any fruit. Why shouldn't I just graft onto it? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. You know, my apple trees. Um, I've got a bunch of apple trees out front in containers, and they're not going to fruit well in containers. So I've also decided I'm going to take those varieties and graft them onto my in-ground apple trees in the backyard. And we can preserve those varieties that way and make sure that we get good growth. But just press on, adapt, and overcome. You know, a garden is supposed to be a place of peace, a place of comfort, a place where you can come out and enjoy the fruits of your labor, quite literally. And, uh, well, if it doesn't work out one season, just wait and garden again the next season. Yeah, we don't have a lot of diversity in the ground right now. Carrots are probably going to fail. What am I going to do? I'm going to adapt. I'll just get some more carrot seeds and plant again, see what happens. Yeah. I like to just sit, listen to the wind blow in the trees, 
squirrels fight over there in the palm trees. Just look around and think about, you know, what can I do better when challenges come? What can I do differently when challenges come? Because man, the challenges this year, this past growing year, mostly were weeds and pestilence and bugs. I think we managed okay. Can't control the future. You just respond to it. Try to figure out how to respond better. That's gardening. That's garden. Well, there we go. That's a, a little bit of uh, some time spent here. I thank you for hanging out with me and just thinking through stuff and letting me just ponder and uh, spend time in my garden that really needs some attention. When it dries up, we can get out here, cut the grass, do some more weeding, replant those carrots. But uh, yeah, if you want to learn how to uh, garden in a small space like this, especially here in Zone 9A on the Texas coast, um, please follow my channel. I know we didn't teach anything today, but I have lots of teaching videos, and we have all kinds going back many years. Uh, my, my channel's 10-year anniversary was recently, and uh, so, yeah, we've got a lot of content out there. And uh, if you're interested, I'd appreciate your subscription. Hey, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye. Phoebe. You've been digging in the mud. I can see it on your nose. And to think you just got employee of the month. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to reconsider. <laughs>